This is a solemn question that we have before us tonight. In Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9 and 11 through 12, Paul said this, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. Of course, there can't be another real gospel, but there be some that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Verses 11 and 12. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul cursed anyone who would preach any other gospel than the one he had received from Christ in which he preached. Why? Because the true gospel saves. Romans 1.16 I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes it. Any other gospel than the true gospel will not save, but will damn. Paul tells us what the true gospel is. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. He says, I am reminding you of the gospel that I preached unto you, that you received, wherein you stand, and by which you are saved. How that Christ died, he says, I delivered to you what I also received. The same thing he said to the Galatians. He received it from Christ. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. It's very simple. When the Philippian jailer cried out, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, period. Finished. That's it. That's what we're supposed to believe. Well, what was the false gospel that Paul cursed? It was preached by the so-called Judaizers, who said that in addition to faith in Christ, one must be circumcised and keep the law. Certainly, they preach that Christ died for our sins and rose again the third day and was coming back. Paul doesn't suggest that they denied that. But to that truth, the Judaizers added keeping the law. Roman Catholicism also declares that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, he rose again, and is coming back. But to that truth, it has added the keeping of hundreds of laws, rituals, sacraments, submission to the Pope is infallible, belonging to the Roman Catholic Church, indulgences, suffering for one's own sin, good works, etc. It is another gospel far removed from the gospel that Paul preached. Our debate is not an academic exercise in theological hair-splitting. I am concerned for the eternal destiny of souls, of my own and also of others, for those of you you who are here tonight, and the hundreds of millions of Roman Catholics that I believe are being offered a false hope that will end them in hell, not even in purgatory, and certainly won't take them to heaven. The issue is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth of God as revealed in his word to each conscience by his Holy Spirit. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, 2 said, By manifestation of the truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Jerry is very bright and persuasive. I'm sure he'll be very persuasive tonight. Don't be taken in by intellectualism, academic credentials, proficiency with Greek and Hebrew. If that's the way to know God, or if that even gives an advantage to knowing God and His Word and being saved, then the vast majority of people have little hope. Jesus said, we must become like little children to enter into the kingdom. He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto babes, for even so it seemed good in your sight. Don't be taken in by the impressive fact that this brilliant young man, and we've already seen that brilliance is not the criteria, that he read the so-called church fathers, and went from Protestantism to Catholicism. In fact, there are not just thousands, but millions of sincere souls who have gone the other way, not because they read the Church Fathers, but because they read the Bible, and they believed the gospel that Paul preached. The numbers are legion who were Catholics who never heard the gospel, never knew Christ. It was not from within the Catholic Church, but from outside 
that they heard the gospel and were saved and then left it. We're here to examine the evidence for ourselves and not to be swayed by what others have or haven't concluded, be they called church fathers or Phi Beta Kappas or whatever. Don't be taken in by arguments concerning what the early church fathers wrote and did. We've seen that the gospel had already been perverted in Paul's day. He said, all in Asia have forsaken me. In Acts 20, he told the Ephesian elders, during the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears. He said, I know that after my departing, grievous wolves shall enter in, not sparing the flock. Also from among your own selves, those who knew him, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Most of the epistles were written to deal with error that had already crept into the church. Paul had to rebuke Peter and so forth. So what these early church leaders did or did not believe in practice may be of some historical interest, but it is totally beside the point. The issue is the gospel that Paul received from Christ and preached. It's the same gospel that Christ and his disciples preached. That gospel is clearly and repeatedly set forth in the New Testament, and it does not change. But the Roman Catholic Church has changed it. That's the issue. And any talk about what early church fathers believed or wrote or practiced is beside the point. You must decide for yourself on the basis of God's Word. As I already said, Roman Catholicism affirms that Christ died for our sins and rose from the dead, that he's coming again, that we're justified by faith. And that deceives most people. Roman Catholicism is like a counterfeit bill. It looks genuine until it is inspected more closely. Let me give some examples. And in setting forth Roman Catholic doctrines, I will quote only from official Catholic sources. Catechisms, the Popes, the Canons and Decrees of the Council of Trent, translated by H.J. Schroeder, 10 books, 1978 and the conciliar and post-conciliar documents of Vatican II, Austin Flannery, General Editor, 1988 edition in two volumes.